The first drawings that I had done were of fire people and then this fire character and a water character coming into a city. The idea of these elements started off from the periodic table of elements. It always looked like an apartment complex to me, and that concept started from like, oh, what if the, the elements were characters, but we boil it down to the classical elements like earth, wind, water, and fire. Those are characters we've never done before. How are we gonna possibly animate that? I would start showing this around, and there would be this wall of like, oh, how are you gonna do that? This question of, oh, what if fire fell in love with water connected to me with my relationship with my wife who wasn't Korean. I just love animation. Ember and Wade were really fun characters to move around. Wade cries at the drop of a hat. <laughs> what a happy family. He just really is a, a wonderful, sensitive guy. Maybe too sensitive. There's a lot of different like levels of outpouring of emotion, let's call it. And it's your very emotional, um, and uh, in a way that Ember also has her anger always right under the surface. She definitely have a temper issue. By meeting Wade, it actually kind of helps her turn her fire into good. And I don't think anyone ever really told her that, like, you can do something good with that fire versus just cause an earthquake in your dad's shop. <laughs> I think a goal from the beginning for this movie was to make sure the characters weren't human-like characters who had water flowing on top of them. For Amber, it wasn't that she was a skeleton on fire, it's that she is fire and Wade is water. They have like hands and legs and then they have face similar to us, but that does not mean that they will move like human. We had the challenge to create characters who were very fluid and behaved very elemental, and we didn't necessarily have systems in place yet for achieving that. If you set something on fire and you want to make a character out of it, a puppet out of it, like, I don't know how to do that. And that's kind of what the challenge of this film was, is like, how do you make a puppet out of fire or a puppet out of water? All of the kind of language we know about skin, hair, cloth, had to be reimagined and invented. So we had to take inspiration from the elements themselves. Like I would just be staring at fire <laughs> for long amounts of time, it's weird. And then whenever I would see water, I would be thinking like, this is good reference. And then trying to pull the essence of that, something from the timing or the spacing or the design of it. The first animator on the film was Tarun Locke, and one of the first things he did was explore Wade and Ember. This is just an early test I had created to explore how water and fire could interact. A lot of the fun comes out of exploring how the element plays a part and how to kind of integrate the element best within the performance. It was a pretty unique challenge. You come on a show and the director immediately wants characters without any bones in it. And usually all our setups are based on bones and joints. And it took a long, long time and a lot of failed experiments to figure out the approach to make Wade and Ember. When I was just started developing Ember, I just had it in my mind that what if she's like really flexible, so even though she's just walking, she kind of looks like she's dancing. There's no straight line in her line of action. Every time she moves, there's always curve to it. There is a fluidity to fire, but it's primarily spiky forms, you know, sharp, and that's in her form because of her personality as well as her element. Pete always wanted to feel like a flame. So the, that was the baseline of the, the shape language of her body and face. The goal was to simplify the fire itself and stylize it between realism and really simple cartoony. Early on, we worked with a 2D animator, and he would take really early kind of mock-ups of Ember and draw over them with 2D animation. That really helped us understand maybe what we would mechanically have to build in this 3D world. And one of them was just the the sort of figure eight quality that he would create in, in the drawing of you know, Ember's leg as she moved forward. And that helped us get rid of that rigid feeling. We added a bunch of controls. 
for animation to loosen things up. We were able to partner and develop some controls that allowed us to uh, turn down the speed of the fire, and that would also reduce the amount of tear-offs, it would reduce the amount of embers that were fluttering above her to try to get her down to a slower, almost more like candlelit feel. We developed this thing called the emotion system. She could have different curated looks, one for pure anger, another one just her normal look. And then we're using also mitten geometry to combine her fingers as well to go like into a simplistic form of her hand if we needed to. The hand for simplicity from a distance often would be a mitten, um, but as she would separate her fingers, the animators could you know, have individual fingers or they could have a mitt. This can't be just a mitt full of fire. She did need to be able to emote with her hands and pick things up and do different things. That way, Ember can actually retract and grow back the hands if she wants to. And the same with any other portions of her body. And that translated into that idea of presence and being able to shrink various parts of her body and slide that around to create an effect of moving transparency. There was such a handshake on this film, more so than any other, between animation, shading, our close work together with the characters team for the rigging and modeling, and of course the effects department. That's what the animators see, and that's the final render. It was really an artistic adventure to discover how loose the pyro could be, how tight to the animation it had to be, and in a variety of settings. I think a lot of the real discovery of the scale of fire, the behavior of fire, was the effects team. They really dialed that in to create a physically natural looking fire that could somehow move like a cartoon. <laughs> it was magic. And that really made Ember feel like Ember. As difficult as Ember was, Wade would present a whole new set of challenges. Wade's shape language is an interesting one. We don't want him to look like a human man body and then just wrapped it in water shape. That's not what we wanted it. We want him to be soft, just like his personality. He's very round. He has no sharp edges. Fluid is a good word for him. There's a lot of interesting things about a water character. What does a water character do when they're standing still? What does water look like? What's sort of the internal ecosystem of his water? The busyness of water. It it reflects light, it reflects the environment. Just the reflection of the environment actually creates all this additional busyness. The refraction, what you see through, like behind, also adds all this additional busyness. So if you think about like trying to make this into a face, it's pretty tricky because there's all this stuff going on back here. Um, and if you want to really see the face, you don't want this. The first images of Wade were generated with a very realistic water, and that was really useful because Pete saw that and said, I don't want this to be realistic. This can't be realistic because if you think of water at the scale of Wade's head, it's totally transparent. Wade, because he's a transparent character, he's made of water, he's actually super see-through. He's interacting with every light, everything right behind him, you can see right through him. We have to be very careful about what you see through him and how to make that visually not too complex, but still feel like he's a water character that you can see through and get the sense that he's translucent and kind of flowy. We had to come up with rules for when certain things were visible and when they weren't. If you're looking at the back of his head and he opens his mouth, can you tell? Do you see an opening or what? And we decided no. We knew Pete's inspiration for Wade's head shape was a, a water droplet, so we always tried to keep that in mind of, of keeping that sort of very circular smooth bottom up to the, the sharper droplet top. A lot of Wade was making sure there's no sharp edges, keeping it very smooth, so I think the sort of smooth little nubs at the end of his feet were part of that sort of design philosophy. It makes sure everything's smooth and water droplety. He has a very iconic hairstyle. What does it mean for hair that's moving and looks like water. We were getting drawings from art and then we were simulating an idea for the hair. The hair is the most active part of Wade, so it's, it has the most simulation in it. We started a little bit more softer shapes and ended up with these three wave shapes we always wanted to see to recognize even though the hair is gonna be moving a lot, Wade's gonna be moving a lot. As long as we can sort of feel these three wave shapes, we're gonna know that's Wade. One of the really gratifying things is like starting early, not really even knowing how to solve the problem. 
but finding our way. The incredible tools that the team would put together to find the layers to get to where we are right now has been both super challenging but incredibly inspiring. It feels crazy to see it all come together at the end of the day. It's been such a long journey. We're all like super proud of Ember. We're really super proud of Wade and the character design. The hurdles that we've overcome as a team have really been tremendous. And like with any film, you really fall in love with the characters. You get to know them so intimately. You're thinking every day about what they're thinking and how they feel about things. And it's really hard at the end of a film to say goodbye to them and to sort of walk away from a project and let them be.